When it comes to Vince McMahon, Albert Einstein said it best. The only thing more dangerous than ignorance is arrogance. Just when you think this company can't sink any lower, they somehow find a way to reach another level of pathetic cringe and extreme negligence. Last night, WWE exposed themselves for the frauds they've become. They packed the Allstate Arena in Chicago only to silence them. Not only were piped-in reactions utilized, but WWE went beyond the unthinkable and actually muted their own audience. WWE made it perfectly clear last night that their fans will no longer have their voices heard if it goes against their narrative or agenda. WWE made it perfectly clear last night that their fans that show up to these shows shall be treated the same way as background extras in a movie or TV show. They're simply there to be seen and not heard. During this review, we will go over several examples of WWE altering the live audio during their live Raw show. From an embarrassing botch during Drew McIntyre's entrance, where we can clearly hear Michael Cole's voice mixed in with the piped-in reaction, all the way to a We Want Wyatt chant that was clearly muted out during an Alexa segment. WWE showed us last night how business will be conducted from here on out. The Thunderdome is not only back, but it's here to stay. Vince fell in love with the power he had to manipulate his own audience during the Thunderdome era. And there's no way he's relinquishing that power. The fans may no longer be virtual, but the reactions are faker than Bill Goldberg's wrestling ability. Monday Night Raw, August 2nd, 2021. The Amplified Review begins... Now. A Mr. Bob Lashley begins this show. MVP says, I know everyone is here to see Goldberg, and Chicago boos the shit out of him. (laughs) <laughs> a minute later, we hear a Goldberg chant, and nobody is chanting his name when the camera pans to the crowd. Hmm, that wasn't a pipe job, was it, Vince? <laughs> then Goldberg finally makes his way to the ring, and I assure you, he is fully juiced up. He is pumping something into those arms, just like Kevin Dunn is pumping those chants into those speakers. He says some things, then some stuff, then adds some words, completes some sentences, and he ends his uber-unique promo with, You're next! Wow, the innovation in a Bill Goldberg promo is through the roof off the charts. MVP starts talking trash to Goldberg's kid at ringside, and Goldberg ends up spearing MVP. This whole thing feels so fucking forced because, well, it is so fucking forced. This is what happens when you have a dude who is not even on your full-time active roster come back every six months to a year with the same shtick, same promo, same build-up, Insane match, nauseating and pathetic. And by the way, is it just BC or did Goldberg's son age a hundred years since we last saw him? Damn, puberty works faster than a Goldberg match. Anyway, moving on. Drew McIntyre comes out next. (laughs) Oh, this is a doozy. Michael Cole's voice can be heard during Drew McIntyre's entrance. That's right. Not only was there piped-in reaction, piped-in sound effect, piped-in noise for Drew McIntyre's entrance, but WWE didn't even bother to clean up 
their own house, clear up their own shit. They run a sloppy shop. A huge botch by WWE. Here's a tip, Vince. If you're going to silence your crowd and pipe in fake noise or past reactions, you might want to take the initial edit of the commentary out. Michael Cole's voice can be heard. The issue, of course, with this is Michael Cole isn't even a part of Raw. He is on SmackDown. On top of that, if you listen carefully, he's talking about a 16-time world champion or some shit. Ric Flair? John Cena? Who knows? (laughs) But it ain't Drew McIntyre. That I assure you. Are they using... Are they using piped-in reaction straight from the Thunderdome and just placing it onto Raw last night? I don't know how they're specifically doing it, but I know for a fact throughout the night they have been altering Chicago's reaction. And that was just one of the first main glimpses. Again, before that, you even had the Goldberg boo. And then a minute later, huge reaction, even though half the arena at least wasn't even moving their mouths. That was the first big indicator that something might be up. But when we actually saw them exposed through a big botch like Drew McIntyre's entrance and we heard Michael Cole... On the playback audio, yeah, man, that's when you knew something was really... That something is really fucked up here. And it wasn't until later in the night when they actually silenced those Bray Wyatt chants where BC said, Nah, that's it. That's enough. That's where I draw the line. You have a full crowd, and you feel you have to pipe in that many past reactions and sound effects... In fake noise, you have that live crowd and you feel they need to be silenced because you know deep down you made one too many bad choices and bad decisions. And instead of rectifying those choices and decisions, instead of understanding your audience's frustrations and changing your ways, instead, you want to silence your audience and put in those fake crowd reactions. Has it really gotten to that damn point? Vince! And you say BC piped in reactions and sound effects and noises have been in pro wrestling for years. Shit, even Goldberg used to have them in WCW. But not to the level that we're about to see them, trust me. Because what Vince McMahon got away with in the Thunderdome, it is that type of power that that dude is not going to want to relinquish. And we saw just a taste of that last night in Chicago. Vince McMahon was able to manipulate everybody for so long during the whole Thunderdome run. Vince McMahon, it became apparent what he can get away with. Him and Kevin Dunn sitting down for those meetings and talking about all the manipulation they can do because they're in the Thunderdome. And they got the virtual squad up on the LED boards. They just needed, they just needed the pictures of them The noise was all manufactured. So now you have actual bodies in attendance. So they thought, well, they can just take the place of the virtual crowd and we can still voice over them. Like background extras in a TV show in a movie, we just need them to be seen, not heard. They don't get any lines. Drew McIntyre, what's sad about this even tenfold is that I respect Drew McIntyre and I actually feel he does not need piped in past reaction. But again, the fact that WWE exposed themselves last night because they run a sloppy shop, if you're going to put in piped reactions and past sound effects, at least take out the original and initial Commentary edit. Damn, you talk about a sloppy shop. Your audience shouldn't be privy to the information that they're, even the casual fan, understand and know that there's piped in sound effects and past reactions. Your casual fan should not have to know this. 
Anyway, Drew McIntyre defeats Jinder Mahal's cronies, Shanky and Ginger Ale, or some shit, whatever they're called. This is via, via DQ when Mahal attacked Drew McIntyre with a steel chair. Post-match, Drew McIntyre chased everybody around with a sword. <laughs> He's just running around with a sword. So you talk about blurred lines. Make up your damn minds, USA Network. Chainsaws are not allowed, but swords? Perfectly fine. Then damn it, we demand one last run for Chainsaw Charlie Terry Funk. <laughs> Much love and appreciation to Chainsaw Charlie Terry Funk. He got told the chainsaw was too much. Well, now you got fucking a sword-wielding Drew McIntyre, man. You know, like, like fucking Mishan from The Walking Dead. We then went on to Nia Jax versus Rhea Ripley. Now, on paper, if there was such a thing as proper booking in this company, this match doesn't sound all that bad. And it was physical, as Jax was sporting that crimson mask from a left eye cut. But this is WWE, and no matter how decent a match may look on paper, these dumb fucks will find a way to embarrass their own wrestlers, insult their own fans, and continue to sabotage their own product. And that's exactly what happened with the finish of this match, which ended with Rhea Ripley Capturing and defeating Nia Jax with the awe-inspiring, ultra-devastating fruit roll-up. Oh, the good old fruit roll-up. It didn't take long for Vince McMahon and WWE to get right into it in the first hour. Nia Jax is a 6-foot, 272-pound mega female that cannot get one of her shoulders a centimeter off the canvas. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. And then post-batch, Ripley hits Jax with a Riptide finisher anyway. So why the fuck not just let her win with the damn move, Vince? It's called a finisher, yet none of these wrestlers actually win a match with said finisher. Every finish is a fucking fruit roll-up! There is zero creativity here, and there hasn't been. Every show, it is the same redundancy. If she was going to perform the finisher anyway, post-match, why not just utilize that in the match? That way, you can preserve the effect of a fruit roll-up finish. Because if you see a fruit roll-up finish four, five, six times a week during all your shows, nobody is going to take them seriously. It has become a farce. It is a facade of an actual move that could end somebody's match. It's not realistic. And then immediately after the match, they show a replay from last week where Mansoor defeated Mace with the same damn fruit roll-up. And then Vince completely trolls Chicago. He has hometown hero Ali lose in a tag team match with Mansoor against Mace and T-Bar. No joke. This was sadly pathetic. Ali gets a great pop, one of the best pops ever, I'm sure. And two minutes later, he and Mansoor are eating an L, just so WWE can keep their 50-50 booking intact. And also, to show the hometown kid, Ali, that we're gonna fuck with you in your hometown. We're going to make you look like an extra special loser in front of your family and friends. Yeah, because I'm Vince McMahon and I'm complete dog shit. Charlie Flair starts hour number two. And I'm going to give a little bit of credit here. 
It was actually a good promo. She's talking about how cashing in a briefcase is the most cowardly way to win a title, and she's been cashed in on three times. So she has an actual gripe against the original concept of Money in the Bank as a whole. So as much as the majority of us can't stand Charlie's booking, this promo at least made some sense as to why it seems Charlie has another level of beef toward Nikki Ashhole. It's because she doesn't respect the Ashhole. Because Nikki garnered her championship via the cash-in. That's all we're asking for, man. You don't have to move mountains. We're just asking that you just make a little bit of sense on this show. Post-promo, Ashole attacks Charlie with a steel chair. And Chicago was not that happy to see the Ashole. You can pipe in as much past reaction and noise and sound effects as you want. You can silence the audience as much as you want. But you can hear the groan when Nikki Ashole got in the middle of that ring. Now, they warmed up to her as the night went on because Charlie and the Ashole were actually in the main event. Uh, and when it was all said and done, the Ashole's reaction was a little better based on her performance in that match. But for this segment, they were not happy to see an almost superhero. Next, Tamina defeats a Dewdrop. That's right, there is still a wrestler on the active roster named Dewdrop. And I'm the negative one? I'll say that one last time for those in the back. There's a wrestler on the active roster named Dewdrop still. Anyway, the win came off of a Samoan drop. I was actually astonished that it was not a fruit roll-up. Beggars can't be choosers, we'll take it. Post-match, Alexa Bliss appears on the Tron to talk that trash to Eva Marie, and the crowd ignites in a We Want Wyatt chant, but Vince McFuckwad had the crowd noise silenced. You don't have to just believe BC on this. You can go back and check the vid. Check the footage yourself. And you can clearly see the crowd. First of all, even though they tried to mute it out as best they could, you could still audibly hear the We Want Wyatt chant. But you could tell if you've been watching wrestling for long enough pre pandem era how a live crowd sounds. And you can tell that they were muffled. It wasn't just... It wasn't just the commentators talking over them. Which, by the way, if you noticed last night, Vince told them never to shut up, basically. This is not the first time that this has happened in Chicago. They also try to do this in places like Toronto uh, for, like, the day after WrestleMania. You know, that show is always pretty raucous, and Vince does not like that. Uh, that it goes against his narrative and agenda. But... You will, you will notice that the commentary is extra talkative. They don't shut up. It's because they don't want the crowd to be louder than commentary. That mixed in with the muting and the, the piped in reactions and sound effects and noise. I'm pretty sure Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon felt they had a, a solid plan. What they didn't take into account was when a chant is going on, and we can see, we can see in this segment as Alexa Bliss is talking on the Tron and Eva Marie and Dewdropper in the middle of the ring, you see the audience, you see the fans actually doing the clap in the We Want Wyatt chant, and you can still hear it through the mutant. So, that tells me, again, you're running a sloppy shop for not taking all of this into consideration. The We Want Wyatt chants were clearly muted. Silenced was Chicago once more. But don't worry, Bray. We done heard it. And thank you, Chicago. I saw it and I heard it. And even though the, the old bastard in Stanford tried to mute you, tried to silence you, tried to treat you like shit, BC will acknowledge and show that respect. To all of those that started that chant up and went against the grain and weren't there just with their wooden bowl handing it out going, please sir, can I have some more? And that Vince McMahon shit stew. No, Chicago, I'm proud of you, man. And that crowd was obviously a lot of family type crowd. It's post pandemic Everyone wants to get out of the house, right? Let's give little Charlie and little fucking Jimmy some tickets to WWE Raw, right? 
wasn't exactly the crowd that's going to show up and really teach Vince McMahon a lesson. And that's what made that even more special is because I garnered, I gauged that crowd initially when the show started, but I was like, you know what? They could still put out some pretty cool fucking moments and chants. They could still show up and show out loud. And they did in moments like this, man. So even though it was silence, man, we saw it. We heard it. Vince McMahon could not totally shit on you guys. And again, for Bray Wyatt, man, much respect, much love, and whatever he does next, we'll be right behind the man supporting. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm actually fucking, I'm just, I shouldn't be shocked or puzzled. Uh, maybe it's frustration that, that Vince McMahon would still have Alexa Bliss in that same character, man. Uh, it is such disrespect to Bray Wyatt. And it's disrespect to Alexa Bliss, who is only going to catch heat for this. And it's not the good type of, oh, this is fun heat. This is the type of heat that can honestly ruin an individual. Not just a character, but the actual person playing the character. This is not going to help Alexa Bliss at all. And on top of that, every time we see Alexa, we're just going to think about Bray anyway. This helps nobody. The character was jacked. It's not Alexa's fault. It's Vince's fault. It's his blueprint on all of this it's his decision to jack Bray Wyatt's character and give it solely to Alexa Bliss but at the end of the day it doesn't matter who did it whose fault who's the blame the fact that it is still being done is now the issue and now Alexa Bliss has to really have a big long chat with Vince McMahon is this seriously not only what's best for business but is this what's best for me Vince And if Vince looks in Alexa's eyes and honestly says, yes, it is best, it's good shit, it's the best. If he honestly says that to Alexa Bliss, then Alexa will then know once and for all, as if she doesn't know already, that this dude is a douchebag. A long Miz TV segment followed between Miz, Drip Drip, and Damian Priest. During this long Miz TV Muted CM Punk chants erupted. That's right, this is another segment you could go back, watch for yourself, and if you watch pro wrestling for long enough, you know how a live crowd feels and sounds. Now you go back to this segment, you hear that chant, and you tell me that wasn't muted or tried to be muted out? It's basically the Thunderdome just with live humanoids, as Bobby the Brain Heenan would call them. (laughs) The segment ended with a water gun fight, obviously. This is the same shit we've been seeing for weeks and even months with the same characters doing the same shit. A water gun fight. Following a commercial, we have Priest versus Morrison, and Priest defeats Morrison in under four minutes. Is that necessary? That's great that Priest is winning a match, man. I hate when people are built up by tearing others down. It's the same thing they did last week with Keith Lee and Karrion Cross, which was the dumbest shit in the world. It was obviously a troll job by Vince McMahon because he knew neither one could lose. Well, in this situation, you're trying to build up Damian Priest, but damn, Morrison is worth so much more than this. To watch this guy, Lou, he's so good, man. Morrison is so, so good. And to see this dude lose another match in less than four minutes the way he is, just unacceptable, man. And then post-match, Sheamus attacks Priest. And Ricochet makes the save. So we go to commercial, and when we come back from commercial, we now have a tag team match between all four of these dudes. Priest and Ricochet versus Sheamus and Morrison. And get this. Priest defeats Morrison again in less than four minutes. Twice within a 10-minute period, Morrison is getting defeated by Priest. Bro, Morrison is better than this. Morrison deserves more than this and better than this. This dude has turned shit into gold for far too long. Everything that they have this guy go out there and do with Miz... He makes it that much better. But now, at what point do we say it's getting to, it's crossing the line of redundancy? I mean, he's out there now all the time talking about he's so moist that he's dripping wet. Or or some shit. And he says it over and over about how moist the ring is. And how wet everybody is. And everybody's drip dripping. 
I, I don't even know how to fathom this. If somebody walks in that doesn't watch the product, I ask you, anyone who's listening to BC Amplified right now, how do you tell somebody that doesn't watch the product that was to walk in for the first time and listen to that shit? I mean, it's fun for a while, and then you kind of cross a line, man. I'm just saying, at some point, you better start resting on Morrison's wrestling ability because it is immaculate, and stop resting on the drip, drip, wet moistness. I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Moving on. <laughs> Our number three starts off with Omas defeating and dominating Matt Riddle. Randy Orton was advertised for the second week in a row, but he never appeared, at least not on the live taping. I don't know if he was in a dark match. I'll do more research. It's very early right now. Clearly, we out in the world. We got a lot to take care of, so this is audio format only. But I got to look in to see if Randy Orton was maybe in a dark match. If not, then this would be the second week in a row that Randy Orton didn't even make an appearance in front of the live crowd when he was originally advertised because it was the same deal last week. What's the deal with Orton, man? Is Orton the next one released? (laughs) You never know with this fucking company. Backstage, Alexa Bliss and Lily. Lily, I can fucking speak. We need another coffee. Alexa Bliss and Lily are attacked by Dewdrop and Eva Marie. Not sure Chicago was shown this. Uh, I think Vince bitched out and didn't want to poke the bear. Because after the segment... First of all, you heard no crowd noise at all during that. Usually for backstage segments, you hear crowd reaction. You heard nothing for that. And then when they showed the crowd, it was complete silence. Like they saw nothing on the Tron. So I'm not sure exactly what they saw, if anything. This could be Vince just tucking his tail between his legs and taking the L. Um, Maybe he was already getting backlash on social media about the pipe job and the fucking muting. Um, But I don't think the crowd was even shown Alexa Bliss and Lily at this point. I think it's because they know the reaction they got with the previous Alexa Bliss backstage segment in the huge Bray Wyatt chant. I honestly don't think Vince McMahon wanted to hear that again. Because again, it was so loud that even though they tried muting that, you heard it. And you saw everybody doing the chant, so it didn't mix with the with the muting. So, this was a, a, a one of those situations where McMahon and Kevin Dunn tried not to be so sloppy. Um, and, and again, it's just sad that this is where we're at. You know, pro wrestling is back in front of a live crowd. And the fans at home can't even enjoy that feel. You know, there's a special vibe when there's a live crowd. Um, And and Vince McMahon has just ruined that. And I don't know if we're ever going to get that same feeling back because he knows he can manipulate now, just like the Thunderdome. It's a Thunderdome all over again. The Thunderdome has never truly went away for Vince McMahon. (sighs) Moving on. Then the arrogance, ignorance, and negligence of this sad company showed its ugly face once again when we got... Get this, this is not a joke, guys. I just mentioned this, and we actually got it again. This is, again, ignorance, negligence, and arrogance. Karrion Cross versus Keith Lee. Same match as last week when the, when the wrestling world kind of erupted. Even casual fans were befuddled as to why this match would take place. Because even a casual knew it's probably not the best bet to have either one of these dudes taking another L. Both of these dudes have been fucked since they got to the main roster. They should have never faced one another last week because neither man could afford a loss. So this stubborn little bitch from Stanford decided to fuck with his own talent yet again. And yet again, we see these two in there face to face. It is decisions like these that makes BC Amplified really want to see Vince McMahon lose, fail miserably, and hit rock bottom. Because nobody deserves to lose, fail miserably, and hit rock bottom more than Vince McFuckwad. They had Keith Lee defeat Karrion Cross last night, which means they are just 50-50 booking both from the jump. Even worse, they had Lee bust out of Cross's cross jacket finisher. What the fuck? That is his main finisher, bro. It's only his third match, and Keith Lee is just busting out of it like the Incredible Hulk. 
BC, this is what you wanted. Keith Lee looking dominant. I have said this for three weeks now. He should be nowhere near Karrion Cross. Not even a promo. I don't want to see them walking backstage around one another. And here Keith Lee is defeating a guy who just beat him last week, so we're 50-50 booking motherfuckers, which helps nobody get over. But the fact that they had the cross jacket broken out of in this match, what does that do going forward? We've already seen somebody break out of his finisher now. What the fuck? Is anybody understanding this? How can anybody watch this and say, oh, oh well, I'm not taking it that seriously, it's just entertainment. I want my entertainment to make some fucking sense, man. I want the shows that I watch to make some fucking sense. Do you realize your NXT champion who was undefeated in NXT, and again, still is your NXT champion, has only had three main roster matches, and he's lost two of the three. That is a true statistic. For the last three weeks, Vince McMahon has paraded the NXT champion out into the middle of that Raw ring, and out of the three matches he's had, two of them he has lost and had his finisher pissed on. Just like last week, we can't celebrate Cross or Lee's victory because the loser should not and cannot be losing. Wow, bro. I can't stand this fucking company with an amplified passion. I loathe this piece of shit facade of a company. Good luck making people care about Cross versus Samoa Joe at TakeOver Triple H because your father-in-law has just taken a giant shit on that entire match and your NXT champion and your entire NXT as a whole. Because at the end of the day, your father-in-law is a piece of shit. Next. Another scheduled 24-7 title match. What the fuck? Now these 24-7 titles are, are, are and these matches are now, they're prestigious all of a sudden? We're going to treat this like an actual title? We're going to stop the catering crusaders chasing everybody around? They didn't stop the ridiculousness when Ember Moon broke her fucking leg chasing around that damn fucking title. No, they didn't stop it then. They stopped it now when they want to give Reginald a push. Reginald, who now wants to go by Reggie, by the way. He says it's time people know the real him. It's not Reginald, it's Reggie. And he then defeats Ninja Tazawa, who was even more ninja-y last night. He was doing the whole fucking hand movements and the oh, 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 ninja. And what the fuck, Reggie? I, Reggie just did his ninja shit, which is fucking flipping and diving over him. It's just two ninjas in there. He just does, and get this finish, he just does a somersault and sits right on Tazawa. It might as well have been a fruit roll-up. Uh, he just somersaults and sits on Tazawa, and Tazawa, this great fucking ninja, can't get up from somebody sitting on him. Well, wow, you suck as a ninja! What kind of ninja can't get up from somebody sitting on them? Doesn't make sense. If you were to come up with the worst television show in the history of ever, you'd have to you'd have Monday Night Raw as your answer. Top of the list. It was must-see TV back in the day. But the last five years alone have taken a thunderous shit on everything those wrestlers from yesterday ever did. This show is a sad embarrassment. And no, I'm not going to stop watching because I don't like it. Instead, I'm going to rip this shit apart more scathing than ever before. Your main event was No Holds Barred, a rematch. Charlie versus Ashhole. Good physical match, just like last week. You know, when we already saw this? <laughs> this week they added some tables. Nikki defeats Charlotte, but Charlotte beat Nikki last week. So Nikki is now defeating Charlotte. Oh, that's right. 
we need to keep up our 50-50 booking. Nobody comes out a winner with this. Everyone walks away a loser. Remember those words when you see 50-50 booking in pro wrestling. Nobody comes out a winner. Everyone walks away a loser. Nikki gets defeated last week by Charlie. Charlie gets defeated this week by Nikki. Nobody wins. Not the wrestlers, not the fans, not the company. An absolute shit fest to the highest proportions. And that is your Monday Night Raw review. That's right. You thought there was more? Did you did, did you think, well, BC, it can't possibly end on a rematch from last week. Oh, it absolutely can. Because again, we're talking about the worst television show in the history of ever. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review, man. What's next? Oh, Thank you, thank goodness. I, I I can't I can't cover NXT because not enough people even fucking watch that shit. Vince McMahon is making sure nobody takes that brand seriously. Next is AEW, and, and, and I can't tell you how, how thankful I am for that. And, and and you know what? I think I'm gonna start reviewing AEW every fucking week, just to give them that respect and to help them, to help them defeat. This bastard once and for all, or at least knock some sense into him so he can take his own head out of his own ass. So at some point, I would like to review AEW. I don't know if it's going to be immediately after AEW takes the airwaves on Wednesday night or even Thursday morning. I'm trying to think of my schedule. But hopefully by Friday I can have something up. I would even love to do that live. We'll see, man. I want to give AEW some fucking more support than ever before. Um, I, this WWE shit has, has hit an all-time low, man. I, I, I just never... I mean, I mean, they literally are just shitting on the fan base to the point where we have to do something now, man. I, I know that sounds so 2021-ish, right? You don't like something and everyone starts fucking protesting and shit, right? Everyone's rallying and speaking out on social media and you're just rolling your eyes like, shut up. Everything th- is a protest these days. Everybody has something. To say, but I'm telling you, man, we need to do something. This shit is fucking batshit, just dumbfoundingly, befuddingly crazy, man. That this dude can make these decisions and nobody, nobody's got the balls to stand up because they're scared shitless. Even his son-in-law won't step up. BC, what do you expect Triple H to say, man? He's not going to win and he's probably scared. He doesn't want to lose his NXT. I expect him to stand up for what he's created, man. I'd rather fucking fall on the hill of me standing up for myself and my creation than me standing on that hill as a fraud and as a coward. Because Triple H is not a coward. Unless he stands up and everybody starts standing up to Vince, man. This is the shit that's going to make everybody look like a little bitch. I'm BC Amplified, and I'll talk to you guys later on this week. Stay subscribed, stay notified to all my newer subs. Thank you so much for jumping on board. Hopefully you guys can handle the amplification. If not, don't worry. There's plenty of other wrestling YouTubers that'll give you all the cuddly rainbow shit that you're looking for. Here we're going to tell the truth, and we're going to do it in an amplified way and fashion. So to my new subscribers that have joined and you like this, type of content and you're digging BC. I appreciate it. And it's good to have you on board to all my tried and true, uh, veteran subscribers. You guys are the absolute best as always. The respect and the love is right back to you guys. And, uh, we'll do this again very soon in the near future. Uh, until then coffees and ass whoopings go about your day. Whoop that ass. Think be live amplified always check you later.